person race, three to be elected. We've got three in the studio with us right now. We have, um, and let me get the paper in front of me, Adam Gaffney, Barbara Smith, and Bob Wilmar. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, we're going to have just a few minutes to get the issues in play. Adam, let me start with you. Give me a little bit about yourself, who you are, what's got you into this race. Well, my name is Adam Gaffney, and currently I work with ADS Security. I run the operations for the state of Florida. Um, I've got a family, uh, married uh, 10 years, and we're actually together for 18. Uh, I've got two children, Addison, she's six years old, and my son, Braden, he's nine months old. And I got into this race as a concerned citizen. Um, I wasn't happy with some of the decisions that were being made, especially when it pertained to all the citizens' money. And also, I didn't feel that the citizens' voice was heard, and uh, it kind of just propelled me into the race. Uh, I felt I had to take a stand and get involved. All right, very good. Any experience? You've got your business experience. Have you been involved in politics anywhere before? No, never. So you're you're dipping your toes in the water. I am, I am, but you know somebody's got to. All right, very good. Barbara Smith, you're not a stranger to the folks in West Melbourne. Tell me a little bit about what got you into this campaign. Well, um, I recently retired from um, the city of West Melbourne. I was a detective in criminal investigations um, for the police department. I worked also as a resource officer over at Central Middle School. And prior to that, of course, I have I do have a prior law enforcement experience totaling about 42 years. I am a resident of West Melbourne. I've lived in West Melbourne for over 15 years. Uh, my son, Brian, lives in West Melbourne, as well as my parents, Richard and Lillian Diamond. They live over in Hollywood Estates. So I'm kind of embedded. This is the place where I want to stay. So that was part of the reason that I decided that even though I've never been in politics and the whole thing scares me to death, that mm-hmm. I, I, I feel that I have something to offer. I know the city. I know the people. And I think that I have something to offer the residents uh, and maybe level out the, um, the playing field. Is there a particular problem or a circumstance in the city of West Melbourne that prompted you to run something that said, you know what, I can make a difference on this. Let me jump and do it. Well, I think over the past year year or two, we've had some uh, negative publicity about the police department. Uh, it's because I don't know anyone who would have been involved in that. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> it, it it's 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 been my life. I'm a widow for about 20 years now, and so I've devoted myself. I've been on call 12 years in a row, 24 hours a day, uh, while I work there. So the police department and the men that are, and women that work there are my family. So I think that I want to get away the negativity. I want to show and prove to everybody that um, by supporting them how great the men and women are. And so that was probably my biggest reason to jump in. The police department's been getting hit pretty bad, and they don't deserve it. So okay, th- very I'm good. trying to be their, bo- their voice a little bit. Bob Wilmark, tell me about you and why you want to be in this job. Well, uh, I retired from the, after 22 years in the Army and came to West Melbourne. I've lived here for 22 years now. Previously, I've served on the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. I served on City Council and as mayor for a total of seven years. Uh, since then, I've served as the Citizens Advisory Council and the Board of Adjustment. Uh, the reason I'm putting my hat back in the ring is because I'm sick and tired of the way council's been behaving. They argue and bicker among themselves. When a member of the public gets up enough uh, courage to come up and face us, and let, let's admit it, it's tough to stand up in front of for people many people. And, and it speak is to you're council. right. Yeah, they deserve the full attention of council, not uh, not people playing with their taxpayer provided notebooks up there at the stand. And too often, council members actually attack the citizens that are trying to do speech. They belittle them, they scold them, and that's just no way to behave. And I want to see if I can make a change in that. Plus, I agree with uh, <clears throat> my two co-candidates here that uh, the way the police department was handled is a disgrace. We'll get into that issue maybe if we got a little time in just a little bit. I, w- I want to get from each of you, though. What do you be- believe the top issue is that you'll be facing if you're elected to council here? What's the main priority for you if you're elected? What do you want to deal with? Well, the budget's under control. That has always been an issue, and it will always be an issue because we're faced with declining revenues. But I think civility, basic courtesy among the council members and courtesy between the members and the public is the main thing that needs to be addressed right now. All right, very good. Barbara Smith, top issue for you. What do you think this council needs to address, and, and what's the priority for them? Well, I I believe we need to, to – the budget's doing well. 
the city is doing well. There's not a big problem with um, uh, in, a debt. They're not really in debt. You know, they've come through this last three or four years in basically really good shape. There are a lot of good people in place. Uh, this, you know, ranging from the um, city manager, you know, to some of the department heads, uh, good people. But for me, it's it's making the city back. We were so proud to be from West Melbourne. Uh, we're not. We didn't like just being the little side guy from Melbourne. We liked being, and I was part of it. I liked being a West Melbourne resident. And so, what for me, it's getting back to being proud of who we are, where we live, and why we live there. So I think civility is a, is a wonderful word to say that I really believe that we, we need to come together. That's why my, my campaign you know, slogan is bringing heart back to the city. And that's what I'm going to attempt to do. You know, bring my brain, but basically bring my heart All and right. throw it in. Very good. Adam Gaffney, top issue as you see it on this council and, and things that need to be dealt with in the city? Well, currently, uh, we need to be the voice of the citizens, the 18,000 residents of West Melbourne. Currently, I don't think that's the case. I think there's two different sides to this council. I don't necessarily think that it's the issue. It's being on a particular side. We need to eliminate that. We need to make our own decisions and be the voice of the people. All right. Let Everybody's saying that the, the budget and, and tax situation is pretty much under control right now, so let's go beyond that. One of the things that West Melbourne may be doing that other, that other cities aren't doing as well is the management of their community redevelopment area. And that CRA has been a danger to many cities. Do you like what that CRA is doing? Would you tweak it or would you try to stay with it or maybe stay away from them in the future? I'm going to have to look into that a little bit further. Um, So I don't have a 100% answer on that. Okay, that's fine. Barbara Smith, what about the CRA? Well, the CRA that they're currently using now is the first first attempt to even jump into the CRA um, waterfall here. Uh, I think it has to be on an individual basis of what, where it's going to be used. The one right now is uh, for Route 192, and it does have some good benefits for it. But, of course, everybody knows California and every place else, there are some pitfalls. So I think this one we're going to, since we already started to jump in, is going to be let's watch and see before we attempt any others. Let's see where this one goes because uh, – it, there's a chance that it could benefit. It could benefit the business, and that's what we want to do. We want to make 192 a better place for the businesses. All right, Bob Wilmarth, what do you think about the CRA? Conceptually, CRA is a really great idea. The key lies in the execution of it. For those that may not be familiar with it, the idea is that people who uh, improve their properties, the increased value, the tax that is applied to that part of their valuation goes back into the CRA for further redevelopment. Uh West Melbourne has taken a rather unique approach in that they are going to make the council the directors of the, C- of the CRA. Most places uh, have professional development or a separate body for it, so we'll have to see how that works. But uh, if it's done properly, it will be an excellent benefit for the city. All right, very good. Let me stay with you as we'll go back around the table with this question. Is West Melbourne as business-friendly as it should be? And I refer specifically to things like code enforcement actions, signage for businesses. Do they encourage businesses to come in? Do they support businesses? And what is, what does the council need to do in regard to growing business in West Melbourne? Well, I don't know that we're as friendly now as we were 10 years ago. Uh, that's one of the things that I've heard as I've gone around and talked to people, that uh, there may be some concern about how the code enforcement acts, not as to whether they're right or wrong on their particulars. I'm I'm sure they're right on the instances, but uh, the way they approach it and the the idea of of doing a complete inspection, not stopping when you first find one fault, uh, has come up a couple times. But uh, overall, I think that we have a highly professional staff and that are doing a great job. If we can find a way as council to uh, relax some of the impediments to business without creating uh, a greater problem, then uh, I'm all for it. All right, very good. Barbara Smith, your take on the business environment in West Melbourne. I think the business environment, um, for a while there was a a lot of strict rules. I think now we're trying to uh, encourage businesses to come in. Tuesday night uh, at the council meeting, Lowe's is asked to be annexed in. Uh, for the city of West Melbourne, I think everybody thought Lowe's was already in the city of West Melbourne, but mm-hmm. it wasn't. Uh, so it's a good thing. There are some issues with Lowe's uh, pertaining to uh, size of the um, uh, the parking spaces, as well as some of the things they're allowed to do on the outside. So I think that 
they're now looking to see we want Lowe's. We want them to be part of a city. We want the tax base. But then again, we also have Home Depot. So now we have to find a way to be fair to everybody. So some of it, we should relax a little bit because we want to encourage the business. 192 is a big part of West Melbourne. So it's a that's a business area, not a residential area. And Hopefully, it, it's going to be chock filled with um, happy business people. So happy business people make happy for the, everybody and all the residents of West Melbourne. So I think relaxing it is going to be a, a just a little bit. But th- the, re- the rate that they're going, the professionalism of the group that are are running the uh, code enforcement, I think is is all in the plus sign and all in a good direction. All right, very good, Adam Gaffney. Give me your thoughts on the business environment in West Melbourne and what you'd like to see happen. Well, I think currently uh, we've got a great staff in place that does encourage business to come to West Melbourne. Could we do a little bit better? Absolutely. There's always room for improvement. Uh, What we've got to do as a city council is we've got to be able to listen to those businesses and concerns because ultimately we don't want them to go out of business. We want them to grow. We want them to expand. We want to, you know, have businesses encouraged to come to West Melbourne. And um, so really, truly, it's about listening to the business owners in our community and really encouraging them to be the voice. And like uh, Bob had said a little earlier, you know, we've actually got to listen to these uh, these businesses, these residents, when they present something to council to us. Uh, We've got to take every item seriously and and action. We're not going to agree on everything, but we do need to encourage their feedback to make our city better. All right. We've got just a little bit of time left. I want to go back to the police department issue in one regard. And that is the form of government in West Melbourne right now requires that police chief to report to every council member as the department head, as opposed to a strong mayor, which is not the form of government they have, or the city manager, which is the form of government they have. Given your option on council, Barbara Smith, we'll start with you. You've come out of the police department. You've seen what that structure is like and how it's worked. Um, What would you do as a city council person in regards to where the police chief reports and how? Well, because I lived it for over 14 years, I watched the um, the, the former police chief, uh, Brian Locke, uh, having seven bosses on top of him. I, from my point of view, uh, I didn't like it at all. It, it consumed him. He had, on a daily basis sometimes, co- the comings and goings of the city council. Everybody had a request. Everybody had a, a mother, a father, a sister, somebody that needed something. And My impression s- is they tried to micromanage the police department as, as well, the department head de facto. They tried to, um, uh, in my opinion, they tried to uh, uh, exert favoritism and things that they wanted and needed. Uh, some of it for the city, but some of them uh, on a personal basis. So that left the por- the um, the police chief to be looking out for seven people. And so sometimes all his time was devoted to doing that. That became a full-time job, not taking care of the police department. So would you put it into a, a city manager being the person the police chief reports to? I think that the other way, what didn't work so well, and I think it took away from our police chief. It took away from the police department. Mm-hmm. So I think that a g- with having a good city manager, it would take some of the pressure off the police chief, so I would be in favor of that. All right, Bob Wilmarth, give me your thoughts on the police department. Absolutely belongs under the city manager. We have to have one person in charge of the entire staff. The police department is over half the budget. How can a city manager possibly plan if he doesn't have budgetary control over half the money? We've had a charter review commission that has three times recommended to city council that it be placed on the ballot to amend the charter because that's what it's going to take to move the chief under the city manager. Mm -hmm. Now they've done a a patch on it that says, according to his contract, he reports to the city manager. But still, according to our charter, he's answerable to council, and council is the one who hires and fires the chief. So I think that uh, we definitely need to amend the charter, and I would certainly vote for that at the first opportunity. All right, Adam Gaffney, your thoughts on that situation? need to take the politics out of the police department, period. Um, I believe that the police chief should report to the city manager. Uh, He's more involved. They're right next door. Um, He's a very educated man, um, and I think he would do a great job um, and ultimately take the politics out of the police department. All right, very good. Last question, because we are running way over on time here. Bob, we'll start this with you. Um, Recently, the city council voted itself health insurance out of the city coffers, and uh, I affectionately call it Ely Care. 
tell me what your thoughts are on a city council that is a part-time body in nature getting those in essence full-time employee benefits is it a wise move is it something that should should happen Uh, there are those who say it entices better candidates to run for office give me your thoughts on that please i think it's absolutely preposterous i spoke against it when it was being considered by council uh the commission had previously put a referendum in front of our citizens capping the total remuneration for council at $400 plus or minus cost of living. Uh, They found somebody who would tell them that health care is not a remuneration uh, and so they adopted it and while it might have been technically legal I thought it was highly unethical and totally immoral and I will vote to overturn that as soon as I can. Barbara Smith your thoughts on the insurance situation for council? Well having insurance from the city of West Melbourne for 14 and a half years I'm trying to look at it objectively. Uh, I know it's it's an extra money. I know I, but I do. I did look to see how many other cities give that kind of um, uh, benefit to the council. Being on council is not an easy job, so I'm not really sure. I don't know what the full cost would be, so I would have to look at it and see. My understanding is the forty-seven thousand dollars they saved by shutting down the police department overnight and on weekends. But I don't think it's personally. I don't. Those think that's numbers the have case. been reported publicly. I know. I don't know if I believe that part of it. I don't know what the costs are, and I don't think that that was the reason. And I think that most of the people on council already have insurance, so I think it's only one person. But I could be wrong. But I really believe it's only one person who was using it. So I don't think that comes to forty-seven thousand dollars. Okay. But I'd have to look at it and, and see the numbers and see because uh, being on council is a a really hard job. All right, Adam Gaffney, what do you think? What we got to do is we got to look at the total potential impact on future council members that would take that insurance. I believe it's additional financial compensation. I believe we should eliminate it. And one of the first things I will do when I get in office is I will make a motion in order to eliminate the health care benefit from city council. Being in business, it's unheard of. Uh, $400 a month, $100 a week. Who gets health insurance in business? Would a business do that? Majority of them, I would say 90% of them. No, absolutely not. I would eliminate the... I would make a motion, and I would support eliminating that coverage. Very good. Let me give you just a second or two. If folks want more information about you or your campaign, what's the best way for them to reach out? Best way to reach out is on my website at www.adamgaffney.com. Spell it for them so they know. Oh, sorry. Uh, Adam, A-D-A-M, Gaffney, G-A, two F's is in Frank, and is in Nancy, E-Y, dot com. All right. And it has my uh, contact email address on there as well, and they could read a little bit about, more about me and my family. All right. Barbara Smith, if folks want to get more information about you, your campaign, best way to do it? They can email me at WMBARB, West Melbourne Barb, 765 at AOL.com, or uh, my home phone number, 321-728-8510. All right. Thanks very much, Bob Wilmar. If folks want more information about you, your campaign, what is it? You're welcome to call me on my cell phone, 537-0303, or email me at bobwill21 at AOL. That's B-O-B-W-I-L-L-2-1 at AOL.com. Very good. Thank you all for taking the time this morning. It's been interesting, informative, and good luck. We'll see what happens on Election Day. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. Thank we'll you. see you guys back here on WMMBAM.com. Thanks for checking in.